Ladies and gentlemen, we have another very interesting Make in India story for you in the Pecha Kucha segment. Now we have a 22-year-old Rahul Arepaka, founder of Harvested Robotics, who will talk about how he's building laser weeding technology for farmers. They're certainly one of a kind. There are only 15 countries in the entire world who are working on this technology, and there's another one in India. So, welcome Rahul. Hi everyone. Hi. Uh, so, hi everyone, my name is Rahul. So, I'm from uh, Harvested Robotics. So, we are a startup uh, based in India that's trying to, you know, tackle the issue of weeds on the farms. So weeds are basically the unwanted crops that grow along with your main crops that actually, you know, take all your nutrition content, cause diseases, pests, and things like that if you don't eliminate them at the very early stage. And weeding is a huge issue in farms across the globe. And in India, we only have two major ways of eliminating weeds. Either we hire labor to actually manually pick weeds out. So for an acre, you would spend roughly eight hours to nine hours to do weeding. And farmers in India are, are spending roughly 10,000 rupees per acre per weeding session. And in a season, people are doing weeding close to four to five times, right? The other way of doing weeding is spraying chemicals, right? You have to spray them three times a season and that, you know, degrades your soil, it goes to the groundwater and even, you know, causes lower yields, right? Uh, so we have come up with a way of, you know, uh, detecting the weeds by using camera systems and AI. And then we use high power lasers to eliminate these detected weeds, right? And our machines, you know, uh, are three, do three major things. First, they capture the image and then we run an uh, AI on this to detect what's a weed, what's a crop and where to shoot it. And then we just use high power lasers to burn them in less than 0.5 seconds. And our machines are called Rakshak, which basically sits onto uh, any tractor uh, using the three-point hitch. And we're also powered from the tractor itself. So uh, we have cameras and lights that are looking down on the crops, you know, detecting them. We have a very high uh, targeting accuracy as well. And we can attach to any tractor out there. And we, using our technology, we're eliminating the, uh, you know, the use of chemicals. And also, you know, we are hiring just one person to drive your tractor across your farms and we do weeding in real time. And the entire system also doesn't require any batteries because it's directly powered from the tractor itself. And uh, so this is, this is how our, you know, you know, machines operate. So you can attach to a tractor and, you know, you can run your, uh, you know, drive your tractor across the farms. Just to show you a close-up image on how we actually burned on weeds. So this is a video of us, you know, eliminating weeds in our, in our you know, in our uh, office. So it just takes less than 0.5 seconds to burn down weeds. So we can do close to 100 to 120 weeds uh, per minute. And uh, the problem is that in order to actually make our machines work, we need to collect a lot of data, right? And there's no farm or agri or crop data in India. And, uh, you know, unlike other countries where universities are actually collecting it. Uh, so we have decided to actually collect our own data. So uh, we have our camera boxes attached behind tractors and we're actually collecting, uh, you know, data from different uh, states in India. So this is how our machines look on the farms. So this machine is also attached to our tractor, gets power from a tractor. And we use GPS and, you know, uh, you know RGB and near infrared camera systems along with lighting systems to actually capture really, really high resolution images from, you know, 50 to 100 centimeters from the ground. And all these images are geotagged, so we know what crop it is in, and you know which location is it in, and also we know what time of the day it's being collected at, and also uh, we are you know uh, you know collecting in this data in real time. And so all this data, all these you know machines have a you know onboard SIM in it, so it's having internet. So all these machines actually come to us directly. Uh, the images can be seen on our platform, and uh, we collect in both two different formats in both near infrared and RGB. And, uh, you know, we're trying to build the India's biggest agri data bank, which is only focused in Indian farms. So we know what type of crops and what type of weeds are growing out there. So this is actually a farm in uh, KGF in outskirts of Karnataka. We're actually collecting images for uh, cabbage crops. Yeah, so uh, that's about it.
and uh, you know anybody is working on robotics or ai or you know computer vision you know we love to attract new talent and also work with farmers so anybody can reach out to us So that's another very powerful story of innovation with us here. Um, so Rahul, again, uh, you know, my question to you is, uh, you know, um, you showed us this very interesting technology. We all know how farmers themselves are at the bottom of the pyramid, right? And you are coming here with this technology, but we also know that, I mean, how much labor-intensive weeding yeah. is, right? It takes 20, 30 percent of their farming time goes into just weeding. So, I mean, the work is phenomenal, but what about, uh, can you give us the whole business model of, you know, like, are farmers directly your clients, or how does that work? Uh, so we don't directly sell it to the farmers. So mm -hmm. our plan is to, you know, we are trying to set up a dealership network with existing tractor OEMs or agri equipment OEMs, and we try to uh, plan to roll out our machines through them. So servicing becomes easier for them because these machines have to be maintained every year, and also the data has to be updated every year. So our plan is to do like a dealership model, so farmers can pick it up from the closest dealership, just like how you buy a tractor. So how, if you can tell me, how much does it cost? Right. Uh, so. You know, as you know, as you mentioned, there's only 15 companies globally working on this, and all the machines out there which are commercially available would cost you at least a million dollars, which is roughly 10 crores. Whereas our machines, which are built for Indian farms, Indian tractors, the power requirements, so we are priced. Uh, we're looking to be priced around the uh, 10 to 12 lakh uh, rupee, you know, price point for you know this weeding technology. And is there also, uh, you also mentioned about the AI platform you're building with all the data. And it's also interesting that now you are also building this whole database of crops and fruits and vegetables that are there in the country. But do, does this uh, AI database also goes to the farmers in this 10 to 12 or lack cost? Or right. So all these machines in order to run, right? So we need that AI and this AI has to be, you know, from a, we have to collect the data. So all this data that we're collecting and building the model is going to be in the machine. And also every time the machine runs, also we keep collecting data so we can make the waiting process faster, make the AI much better. So we keep collecting data. So that's like a never ending process. But it's still a one-time cost. There right. is no. There is no. There is no software. It's not a SaaS model. There is no SaaS model. It's a one-time buy, and you can use the machine. But in future, our plan is since we are collecting a lot of data, but we want to give insights to the farmers. We plan on testing out maybe like a, a like a you know hundred rupee uh, where you can do analysis on your farms. You can. This is more like an antivirus software for mm -hmm. farms that we're looking at, but that's not the goal at the moment. Okay, and also, um, you know, um, uh, I will also ask this question that I asked Pranav about the whole ecosystem challenges. Uh, you yourself took, uh, I mean, you're 22 year old, but you still took very long to develop this technology, right? So, uh, I mean, how does the economics work? And what support did you get and from where? Okay, so, uh, you know, we started this company back in 2023 when we were still in college. Uh, so, you were, you were a bit super lucky because we had a really good uh, college. They were able to support us. So, they gave Which us college? roughly, you know, we came from uh, Mahindra University in Hyderabad. Oh my. So, uh, we have an incubator there. We have a really good VC. Uh, so, they gave us roughly, you know, 20 lakhs to build this uh, technology, uh, you know, in our fourth year. So we were able to build a few prototypes, do a little bit of testing, and also the university, you know, had the Mahindra Connect. So we were able to get tractors from Mahindra to test it on every single model of this, to test it out. And also we used to get a really good insights from them, you know, this is the Indian farming turning radius and things like that. So that really helped. And then also we got a government grant of 10 lakh rupees. So that helped us to, you know, kick in, uh, put in more hours into development. Uh, but we recently raised like a, a pre-seed round where we raised, you know, roughly five crores from a VC based out of Bangalore. And also we were lucky enough to be backed by Anand Mahindra as one of our angel investors. Yes. So, and, uh, you know, and, but yeah, funding is, uh, is, you know, we have to speak to roughly 20, 30 investors across India, telling them these 23-year-old guys want to build something in Agri. 
but yeah, it took some time, but it took us roughly 11 months to raise money. I think the good thing that worked for you was your uh, research time was a little less as compared yeah. to a lot of other hardware startups. Yeah, so we're still researching, we're still testing, yes. but yeah, the initial uh, kick that we got in from college, mm -hmm. so that helped us to save time. Yeah, yeah, the POC was up, yeah, and, yeah. okay. And uh, if you, we have a lot of students here in our audience, so, and a lot of us, a lot of, um, when I see, uh, speak to a lot of students, they are mostly interested in internet startups, you know. Right. So what would you like to tell them about Make in India, like okay. what you did? Okay. So I think, uh, you know, hardware is a very different game, right? It's not like software where in a click of a button you can see something working. And hardware, there's a lot of things that you have to play around with, electronics, mechanical things. But it's super duper interesting to work with hardware because you can, that is something that you have built with your hands, right? So I would say that, uh, you know, if people, anybody is interested in computer vision software or, you know, building robotics, you should actually reach out to us. We are actually looking to hire a couple of folks in our company. So there is a employer sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what would you want universities to do more? Because most of the success stories, if we see, I mean, there are all these startup awards that we keep seeing. And I mean, it's only like from the top 50, there are very handful of hardware startups. So right. what would you, you know, like, um, tell, would, what would you want to share with VCs, the universities? So there are a lot more companies like yours out there. Right. So I think, I think, uh, you should, I think if you see any really good uh, company, at least at the college stages, I think we should continue to increase them. So we were super lucky that we had professors helping us uh, as advisors. Our university was, you know, helping us by giving funds to do this. So I think, uh, you know, colleges should actually uh, find more startups like us, not only in hardware, in general, and, you know, uh, test it out how, whether it works or not. So, you know, then they know whether they should pursue this or not. And have you got your first big order or are you still in research? Steve? So we have, so we are still not in the market yet. So we have roughly, you know, a couple of hundred people, farmers individually reaching out to us buying to buy the machine. So we have a couple of signups. We have not taken any big orders yet. Okay. So wishing you good yeah. luck for your journey and yeah. um, thank you for sharing your story with us. We are all inspired. And now I would like to call Ranjit Sahai, Managing Editor at India Today, to come to stage and present the token of appreciation.